In this lesson, you will learn how to identify functions. Functions represent the relationship between two quantities. And a relation defines a rule that applies to the two quantities or variables. So let me give you an example. If I said something like y is 2 times x. Now here we have two variables or two quantities, right? We have y and we have x. And what I said was that y equals 2 times x. And I'll just represent that with parentheses here. This is a function. And the way that we know we can uh, use this as a function is we can pick different input values or x values and generate the output value by using the rule. So if the rule is that y equals 2 times x, when x equals 1, for example, so x equals 1, what do you have? y equals 2 times 1, or y equals 2. So when x is 1, y equals 2. You can say what happens when x equals 2. Well, when x equals 2, right, that's the x value, you would have 2 times 2, which equals 4. So y would equal 4. When x equals 3, y equals 6. Now there's something else to notice about a function. You can have an equation that doesn't represent a function. So you have to be concerned with that. You have to know how to check it. So something you need to keep in mind is that for a function, you only have one output for every input. So that means for every x value, every unique x value, there must be a unique y value. One single x value cannot have two different y, y values. So for example, what if you had the situation where when x equals 1, y could equal positive 2 or negative 2. Now this doesn't represent the function I just wrote over here. This is just a hypothetical. In this case, this does not represent a function because when x equals 1, there are two different outputs. So remember, a function must have a unique output for every input. Now that doesn't mean that you can have uh, that you can't have two inputs that have the same output. For example, if you had a function where when x equals 3, y equals 4, and then when x equals negative 1, y also equals 4, the output values can repeat. This is actually still a function. It really only has to do with the x value. The x value can't pair to two different y values. Now let's practice identifying functions by looking at a, a list of relationships. We've got two different representations. Here in the first representation you have an input output table or an xy table and here you have a mapping diagram which shows you that when x equals certain values it'll point to the corresponding output or y value. Let's take a look at the left side first. So when x equals 2 y equals 4, when x equals 6, y equals 8, when x equals 1, y equals 3, and when x equals 2, y equals 2. Something to notice here is that I see the x value 2 listed twice. More importantly, when the x value 2 is listed twice, it has two different y values. Remember, for a relation to be a function, each input value must correspond to a unique output value. Because 2 corresponds to 4 and 2 also corresponds to 2, this is not a function. Now let's take a look at the mapping diagram. Again, remember, when the arrow points to the y value here, that means that when x equals 2, y equals 1. When x equals 3, y equals 1. When x equals 5, y equals 8. And when x equals 8, y equals 2. Couple things to notice. I see that there is no single x value that repeats with a different y value. For example, each x value here in the left-hand column corresponds to a unique output value, which means that this mapping diagram represents a relation that is a function. The other thing to notice is the scenario that we talked about earlier, which was it's okay for two different x values to have the same y value. For example, 2 as an input has an output of 1, and also when the input is 3, the output is 1 again. It's okay if the y value repeats, but not the x value. So this relation is a function. Now that you know how to identify functions in tables and mapping diagrams, let's take a look at a graph and learn how to identify if a graph represents a function. When you're shown a graph and you're asked to determine whether or not the graph represents a function, what you can do is perform the vertical line test. I'll explain exactly what the vertical line test is in a minute, but I want to explain a little bit about why it's a vertical line. Any vertical line, for example, if I drew a vertical line, it would represent the line x equals 4. 
vertical lines are represented by x equals some value. Now remember, for a function, each x value has to pair to a unique y value. If you draw a vertical line through a graph and the vertical line crosses the graph more than once, then that means that an x value has two different y values. Let's draw a vertical line. Now I've drawn the vertical line in blue and I've done it in the uh, right side of the graph on the both right hand quadrants. I notice that the vertical line crosses the red line once here, but it never crosses again below that. Now let's see if we can draw another vertical line on the left side and see if we have any issues with the number of intersections we get. Okay, so now I've drawn a vertical line on the left side of this graph and I see that the intersection happens once down here, but never again. So that means this red line, this original graph, is a relation that represents a function. The thing to remember is that for a relation to be a function, each input value must pair to a unique output value. You can test that using the vertical line test, and you can also test that by seeing if any x value has two different y values associated with it. Happy solving!